Top 10 Haunted Hotels Sure, haunted hotels are a Hollywood trope and a fixture in spooky childhood tales. But that may just be for a reason. For those that dare, horror enthusiasts can attest that there are a handful of properties across the U.S. that not only receive guests, but have some long-term residents. For example, one of the hotels on this list was visited by none other than Stephen King, who penned The Shining after a terrifying stay at the Colorado Hotel. And so a pop culture fixture was born. Welcome to Brave Channel. You won't want to miss number one, so make sure you stay until the end. Kindly subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button. 10. The Stanley Hotel. The Stanley is widely regarded as one of the most spirited hotels in America, best known as the inspiration for Stephen King's The Shining. The author stayed there for one winter night. The hotel was originally built in 1909 to house traveling bourgeois, providing cars and servants to all visitors. But today, it's thought that some of their spirits still remain. Modern-day guests report that you can hear the sounds of untraceable piano music and maniacal laughs throughout the hotel. These happenings are attributed to the playful spirits of deceased employees and guests. Tip, make sure you book one of Stanley's night spirit tours. Out of everyone, the staff is likely most familiar with supernatural goings-on, and they will have many stories to share. 9. Malaga Inn The Malaga stands today as the only boutique inn of its kind and is considered the most haunted hotel in Alabama. Originally built, this historic property in the Deep South is still reminiscent of the Civil War era with 39 private rooms, Victorian furnishings, and an outdoor courtyard. Originally, the two townhouses were constructed by two brothers-in-law as a wedding gift for the two sisters in the family, and rumor has it they never really left. Guests claim to have spotted a ghostly lady figure in white, swinging chandeliers, lights that turn on themselves, and even furniture that eerily moves on its own. Yeah, if you want to catch a glimpse of the lady in white, guests claim to have seen her pacing the balcony of room number 007. 8. Omni Mount Washington At this resort, you may encounter some invisible residents. The invisible habitant here, Carolyn Stickney, died 1939, is known to tap on doors, and once inside your room, whether you invite her in or not, she has no qualms about borrowing your belongings. She's a Victorian lady through and through, though, all manners, and will return your possessions to exactly where she found them. Tip. Rumor has it that checking into room 314 nets the best chance of spotting the princess, as she's known. Her four-poster bed still sits here, along with Carolyn on the edge of it in the middle of the night, if you're lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you feel about ghosts. 7. Omni Grove Park Inn Back in the 1920s, a young woman either jumped or was pushed to her death from her fifth floor room, 545, to be exact, at the Omni Grove Park Inn. Now, a century later, employees and guests still report her presence, most often as a pink mist or as a woman in a flowing pink gown, hence her nickname, The Pink Lady. How do you like these apples? Tip. Allegedly, Young children are particularly sensitive to spotting her, so if you really want a glimpse, you know who to let loose on her. 6. Otisaga Resort Sizable resort, plus over a hundred years of history, plus no sinister sagas, equals a perfect breeding ground for a ghost community, and a friendly ghost community at that. Earlier in its life, the Saga Resort was a school for girls in the wintertime, and to this day, the giggling of a gaggle of girls still echoes through the third floor hallway when no children are checked into the hotel. Warning, they may be laughing at you, 
but they are young girls after all, so don't take it personally. The adults, however, do want you to take it personally. People have reported hearing their name called entirely out of nowhere. Tip. Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters investigated the property several years back and, through the miracle of modern technology, confirmed the presence of shadowy figures, ghost whisperings, things that go bump in the night for works. Rooms on the second, third, and fifth floors were deemed to be hot spots for haunting mischief. Case closed? No, it's actually just been opened for you. 5. Omni Homestead It's a timeless story. In the oldest wing of one of the oldest resorts in the country, built in 1766, a jilted woman commits suicide after her fiancé leaves her on their wedding day and never returned. Since that tragic day in the early 1900s, she's wandered the 14th floor aimlessly, stopping guests and employees to ask for the time, hoping that she'll catch the hour when her groom-to-be is supposed to come back to her, and that this time around, he'll be there. Tip, wear a watch. 4. La Posada de Santa Fe this hotel's spectral highlight, a German named Julius Staub, picture right, feels right at home here, because before it became a resort, it was her mansion, built by her merchant husband in 1882. After her eighth child died shortly after birth, Frau Julia spun into a deep depression, eventually holing up in her room, never to be seen in the flesh again after 1896. However, in Wisp, Fox, she's still present, most frequently in Suite 100, her former bedroom. Tip, Julia was said to love bath. Guests in Suite 100 have reported hearing water running in the middle of the night, and water throughout the hotel has inexplicably turned on and off. Best advice, don't hog the bathroom. 3. Queen Anne Not all ghosts will leave you cold. Miss Mary Lake, the former headmistress of the school for girls that opened here in 1890, has been known to look after guests who stay in her former office, room 410, just as she surely did for her pupils many generations ago. Some have reported that their clothes were unpacked for them, while others have woken up during the night to find their blankets tucked neatly around them. Tip, don't judge a ghost by its cover. 2. The Mayflower Hotel Presidential alert! The inaugural ball tradition at the Mayflower began while Calvin Coolidge was in office, but he missed his due to his son's untimely death two weeks earlier. To compensate for the lost celebration, he supposedly returns to the site every year on the anniversary of the ball. But Silent Cal largely remains just that in his eternal phase, the only hints of his presence are the flickering lights in the Grand Ballroom at 10 p.m., which would have announced the ball's guests of honor back in 1925, and an elevator that won't budge from the eighth floor, the location of his holding room, until 10.15 p.m., which is precisely the time that he was scheduled to make his entrance to the event. Plus, one year there was a plate of fancy hors d'oeuvres left on the balcony of the Grand Ballroom, Yet those refreshments had not been served that day. Try as they may to fight it, ghosts don't have a digestive tract. What better evidence could there be? Tip, January 20th is the big day. 1. Esperanza Mansion It's uncertain whether this one should be chalked up to local folklore, but there are some who believe there is a fat lady decked out in white wandering the property. Like any ghost worth his or her weightlessness, she's also very adept at keeping us mere mortals in the dark. No one knows exactly who she is or where she came from. It's probably better this way. Tip, if you need a break from waiting for the Lady in White to show up, refocus your paranormal energies on nearby Spook Hill. Legend has it that if you park your car here and shift it to neutral, the car will creep uphill on its own. 
draw your own conclusions, or run your call. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with all our future amazing videos.